Hey everyone, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now today, our quest letter came to us from Inyo Kern, California. Stacy wrote, Dear Joel, I'd like to know how different nuts are grown, harvested, and processed. In California, going north on 99, you often see trees with signs on the fences telling you what kind of nuts are being grown. Well, Stacy, because of you, we have traveled up the 99 to a city known as Newman in Central California. We're gonna focus on a specific type of nut. In fact, this nut is currently California's number one agricultural export. Can you guess what it is? The almond. So let's begin today's Curiosity Quest. We are up here at Stewart and Jasper Orchards, and I'm here with Jim Jasper. Thanks for having us up here. It's our pleasure. It, this place is enormous. About how big is this facility? Well, it's pretty good size. Uh, obviously, California is in the almond business, and, and we're in the almond business in a very, very busy time of year, <laughs> right in the middle of harvest, as you can see all the activity going on. I say almonds, you say almonds. Okay, what, how, what's the difference here? Well, basically, everybody that grows almonds call them almonds. Anybody else throughout the world puts the L in and calls them almonds. So <laughs> call them almonds, call them almonds. We don't care. As long as you eat them, it's great. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. We were actually getting ready to come out here this morning, and we said, yeah, we're going to an almond orchard. And they said, almond? No, it's almond. So we need to say that correctly. Absolutely. How do you say this word? Almond. Almond. Almond? You don't say almond? No. Almond. 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 You don't say almond? No. Almonds. Almonds? Almonds. Almonds. Almond. 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 Yeah, you're, you're an almond country now. I'm an almond country. Yeah. Uh, so about how many acres are we looking at here? Well, here, here on site we have uh, about uh, 650, 700 acres, but we're farming a couple thousand acres right now. Wow. Close by, but uh, our growers, and we depend on growers around here, are bringing in uh, around 20,000 acres of almonds a wow. year. Wow. So keep us busy. Keeps you busy. And you've been here for a very long, since the 1940s, right? Company started, my father and uh, his partner, Mr. Stewart, started in 1948. I came back in 1967 and started working for the company. And my son's now been working here over 20 years, so third generation coming in. And wow. So it's great. What are these? Coconuts. Nuts. Walnuts. Those are pistachios. Clam shells. Almonds. Nuts. Pistachios. Peanuts. Almonds. Corn nuts. Almonds? Um, walnuts, almonds. Well, Jim, is this where it all starts? We have three things that's going on here, right where you can see. Here to our left is a potential orchard. Uh, they have the irrigation system in, which is a buried drip, and they even have marked where the trees are going to be going in, and I would not be surprised if this uh, orchard gets planted within the next two to three months. It, so it's not seeds, it'll actually be a little... little... It's going to be a potted. Uh, almonds are, are, are planted two ways now. A bare root, the bare roots are going to be planted in January, February. But if you, if you buy a potted tree, it can be planted any time. I can tell you, this orchard is going to be potted. So there's a little dripper on both sides of that tree for irrigation purposes. And they like to plant them on a little berm. And then why do we have these white things on the bases? The, the white things are, if they come through to spray the weeds, you can see the weeds are dead. Yeah. They don't want it hitting the trunk of the tree. Once in a while there could be gophers or something out that could nibble on the tree. So it's a tree protector. And then I see, it looks like a bamboo stick that's in here. Is yeah, that... that's just to hold it. Oh, okay. You know, keep it upright. Keep it upright in the wind. It looks very dry throughout here. How often are uh, almond trees watered? Well, obviously it depends on the size of the tree, age of the tree, 
the older trees, the ones that's mature producing your crop, uh, we can irrigate them as often as about every seven, eight days mm -hmm. in midsummer, July, seven August. Days. But as we get into the, the fall time, we'll spread that out to 12 to 15 days. How long does it take an almond tree to produce almonds? Well, what you're seeing here is a two-year-old almond tree. No almonds on it. It hasn't been harvested. Next year, they will harvest this, this tree. So the third, the third year that the tree's in the ground, there'll be a few almonds on the tree, enough to harvest. Sometimes we see two, 300 pounds, we can see up to five or 600 pounds to the acre. Third leaf, and then it will hit full production by seventh to eighth leaf, okay. or seven to eight years. We will call them leaves. Okay. So each time it leaves out, it's one year. So this is second leaf. Across the street, the younger orchard, first leaf. First leaf. You mentioned something about the tree being grafted. What, what are you referring Perfect to? Perfect question. Yeah, there's the almonds that's in this tree is not the roots that was planted. Okay. And there's certain roots that are conducive to plant for almond, almonds. And some of them are called hybrids. Some of them are crossed between an almond and a peach but it would not produce a good nut. So coming from the nursery, these trees are planted by seed in the nursery, mm -hmm. and then they're either budded or grafted, and you can always see the area where it changes from the root to the variety that you want. And it's a little discolored on these. Sometimes sure. it's, it's more apparent than others, but it's not the same root as it is the top. Explain grafted. The nursery will plant the seed, and when it starts to grow, they'll put a bud in them, or a graft. Most of the time now, it's just a bud of whatever variety they want, and that would be after growing about maybe six months. So it would be a very, very small seedling. They call it a seedling. Sure. In, in the nursery, and then they'll go and bud. As soon as they cut bud, it off, right? cut it off, put a bud underneath, and then the bud will take off, and that's what you're buying. And the bud looks like another little tree, or is it just another little seed? It's another little seed, and I can show you buds here on this tree here. I don't know if I could. These are all buds. Oh, okay. Those are buds. Wow. So they're not very big, and yeah. so if they wanted, if they wanted to use this variety, they could, they could cut this, take the buds off and then put it in the tree. Put and that's always tree. done in May and June in the nursery. How do they get the almonds off the tree? They pick them. They pick them. You pick them. Pick them from the tree. They twist them and pull them. Usually just cut down the tree and pick them out. Pick them off the tree or they'll fall. Just pick them. You climb it and pull them off the branches. Pick them. You can just pull it off. Whack them with a stick. Jim, so how old are these trees? Now they're 10 years old. Right in the prime of production, uh, trees will produce anywhere from maybe uh, up to 25 years old. So we're going to have production here for quite a few more years. This is the exciting part, right? I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm excited here. Yeah, so we're just getting ready to shake. You can see we have two shakers here, and they can shake up to 150 trees an hour, if you can believe that. 150 trees an hour? That, that would be a little bit over an acre an hour. About how many almonds are going to be falling off? Probably 15, 20 pounds to a tree. Wow, wow. All right, let me give him a thumbs up real quick. We're good, we're good. Okay. Whoa! Whoa! I gotta move out of the way. Wow! Jim, I feel the ground shaking beneath oh, yeah. us too. Oh my goodness. Now, when they're, when they're on the ground. There's sweepers in the front. So they're not, they're not running. Yeah, they're sweepers sweeping out of the way, so they will not run over the ammon. That's like a mini earthquake. You got I mean, it's like a mini earthquake. Oh yeah, they have to. Look how big the trees are. Yeah. Now, that tree there is probably uh, 18 feet high, and so you got to shake the, you got to shake all the ammons off that tree. Wow. So when they're, when they're on the ground, are they ready to be? Uh... No. No, we'll have to wait for about five to six days. Let the ammons dry, and then we'll come in with the sweeper, and we'll be seeing that soon. So can we can we walk oh, over yeah, here real quick? Sure. You were saying that when they're on the ground, I guess at this point they're kind of green. Yeah, you see the green holes. You see, we don't like that. We like we like them dry, just like that. 
so we're going to have to let them lay on the ground at least five to seven days before we pick up. The moisture on the meats, which is, the meat is inside this in shell. So the actual yeah. almond then, right? The act, actual almond's inside this, and it's going to be 10 to 12 percent moisture today. So we got to get down to about 5 percent before we can pick it up. I didn't realize there was an exterior shell. That's a hull. That's the hull right yeah, there. This is, this is the hull. That's a dry hull. This is a green hull. On the tree, it actually is like this. It's closed, and then when it matures, it opens up. So it's on, I'm gonna make sure we get, get a good visual right here. And then, and then it opens up. Opens up. And then and here, what's this called? That's the shell. The shell. And the kernel's inside the shell. Now you'll see a, a brown kernel in there, which is, that's what people eat right there. Okay, I need it. You can eat it, it's, it's healthy for you. It's a little bit, I said moist. It's moist, yeah. It's moister than what we would harvest. Mm. It needs to be dry. So we're gonna let these sit on the ground. Until they get down to 5% moisture. Still good though. And if you really wanna know something, it's not a nut, it's a fruit. Oh, so now you're tripping us up, man. No, no, I'm telling right, you. So, it, okay. Almonds are a fruit, just like a peach, a nectarine, or an apricot. And if this is what you would eat if it was a fruit. Okay. So this is a fleshy part of a peach. Yeah, it's very... It's... And then if you opened up, and after you eat the fleshy part, you would find a kernel in a shell in it. So it's in the fruit family, not in the nut family. In fact, the rootstock here is a peach rootstock, if you can believe that. Really? Yes. And then we, then we graft on or bud on almonds. Jim, we've moved, I don't know what, five miles away from the last orchard? <laughs> yes, we have. Well, we saw shaking. Yeah. Now, this is the next step. Obviously, these almonds have been on the ground for about five to six days, so they're dry. They're ready to sweep up into a wind roll. You'll see a wind roll right here, and uh, the harvester's going to be right behind uh, these sweepers picking up almonds. So they, these are ready to go into our facilities right now. When did you stop watering, or do you stop watering these yeah, trees? Yeah, good question. We probably took the water off of these trees about two weeks ago. Oh, wow. So, yeah, okay. we will want the tree to start to uh, dry up a little bit, the ground dry up so we can harvest. So normally it's about two weeks prior to harvest. As soon as we get these nuts up, we'll have water back on these trees. We do not want to lose the leaves. Are there different varieties yes, there of is. almonds? There has to be, because it's cross-pollinated. Oh, okay. Yeah, almonds have to be cross-pollinated, and so you have to have bees. So if you were here in February and March, when they're in bloom, you'd see the bees working, and the almond industry here in California will bring in at least two million boxes of bees Whoa. from someplace in the United States. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Many almond trees are not self-pollinating, so bees play a very important role in the almond growing process. You can see there's a lot of trash in there. Yeah. But you'll see when he passes us, what's in the cart is going to be nothing but almonds. Almonds. Now, is it taking off the uh, no. fruit? Or? No, no, we do that when we get back to the hauling and shelling. This thing got filled up so fast. It doesn't take very long. We're going to go over and see him dump this now if you want. That sounds great. So he'll be pulling up, putting it here in the elevator, and then the elevator will put it in the pile, and we'll be out here in the next couple of days, cover, fumigate, and these almonds are good until we come pick them up. And so they're dumping sideways? They're dumped sideways. A little different than the first one we saw. What's this, what are these claws here for? Jack, if there's any sticks, that will take the sticks out of the ammo. Okay. So that's a detrigger. A detrigger? A detrigger. Oh wow, that's a tech term, I like that. <laughs> but, but these ammos do not have very many sticks, so you won't see very many sticks coming out. Wow. And we're in the dust zone now, huh? We're getting <laughs> in the dust zone. <laughs> Do 
All right, Jim, we're out of the field and back at the plant. Yes, we are. Here we got. Here's one of the trailers you saw getting filled out in the orchard. Absolutely. So what's going to happen now? What they call this is a pre-cleaner. Pre-cleaner, okay. Yeah. So the truck is getting ready to dump. It's going to remove first the sticks, which we'll take a look at that. Remove all the dirt. And then what's left is going to go into this plant. So this is dirt, sticks, everything. Everything that came out of the orchard. This is a dirty orchard. All the dirt and sticks over here, huh? Let's take a look. Obviously, you see the dirt and sticks coming out. We don't want dirt and sticks in the plant. So the first thing we're going to look at is the almonds coming out of a bin, going on a conveyor that's going to be clean, very, very clean, oh. because they're cleaned here in the pre-cleaner. They're going to go up and they're going to go through some stages, a lot of stages. They're going to be going over decks. They're going to be going through shear rolls. The shear rolls are going to be knocking off the hull and then the shell. They're going to be going through what they call air legs. That's going to lift everything that's lighter up and leave almonds going down. We're going to be collecting all the almond meats on one belt. All the almond meats are going to end up at one end of the plant. It's going to go through an optics sorter. It's going to go through a what they call a gravity table. It's going to end up in a bin. And when it gets in that bin, we, when we open it, it's going to fill one of those four by four by four bins with 2,300 pounds of pure, clean almond meats. You say almond carbon. meats, you're referring to the actual almond. The actual almond. Okay. And you can reach in there and eat it. Oh, wow. And it's going to be as fresh as can be. How long will it take one of these trucks load to go through this part of the plant? About an hour and a half. There's 10,000 pounds of meat, 50,000 pounds of product coming out of the orchard. So when we bring in a truckload, about 20% of that truckload is almond meats or almond kernels. The rest is hull, shell, sticks, dirt, leaves, you name it. So I see the sticks piling behind us, the dirt piled behind that wall. And what about these huge mountains behind me? What are those? those? Those mountains, this particular mountain you're looking at here is shell. And we separate the shell from the hulls. The next mountain that you see on the other side is hulls. And the reason we separate them because there's a lot more value in the hulls as a byproduct than the shell. Probably five times the value in hulls as shell. And it all goes to the dairy industry. Hulls for dairy feed, the shell for dairy bedding. Really? Yeah, oh yeah. So you're not throwing any no, of this? No, we don't throw anything away. Oh, we don't wow. throw anything away. Now these big white things, those are bag houses. Oh. And, and that's all for dust control. Oh. And you know how dusty it was out in the orchard. Yeah. But when you go in this plant, you're not gonna see quite as much dust. Wow. And so we have to keep things pretty clean around here. And that is how we keep the air clean is with these big bag houses. What's the percentage of almonds that you guys process as compared to, I don't know, California? Okay, California processes, processes over 2 billion pounds. This facility will process between 40 to 50 million pounds. That would be about 2%. Wow! So this facility here has about 150 growers. Acreage-wise, probably between 20 to 25,000 acres. And we take care of ourselves as a grower and our neighbors as a grower. So about 2% of California's almonds yeah. are going through this plant? Yeah, 2% of California's almonds and almond in California produces 80 to 85% of the world production. So basically <laughs> you could say that this plant probably handles about 1.5% of the world the production. The world production, wow! Because they just don't grow almonds in too many other places. In the Central Valley of California. Wow, Jim, what you brought us is really loud. What's going on in here? Well, this is a hot, this is a sizing operation. So the almonds, obviously, we just went through hauling and selling. Yeah. And so you see all these kernels, one of these bins, which is about 2,300 pounds of almond kernels, are getting dumped, going through a laser sorter to take out anything that's undesirable. Then it goes over the sizer. The sizer will break the almonds down into eight sizes. So the largest almond is going to be a number eight. The smallest is going to be a, a number one. 
and we take a sample out of every bin. So we're taking about a five to 10 pound sample of the almonds as they sell the bin, and then we're analyzing it. We have another area here, we call it for quality control. We're out of the sizing room and we're in another noisy room. What's going on in we here? We have a lot of noise around here, but it takes noise in order to get these ammons packed. The first process is going to be laser sorting and optic sorting. So we have machinery removing anything that we don't want in this product. What are the lasers looking for? The lasers looking for anything that's undesirable. It could be foreign material, it could be a reject. That could be something as simple as a chip and scratch. Wow. We have customers that want to buy brown almonds with no white towing, meaning no chipping, chipping and scratch. Like this one right on top yeah. right here? Like that? Yeah, like that. What size are we working with right here? This would be probably a five. A five? Yes. Okay. So I see it just loaded it right behind us right here. And then what's it going to go through? More screens and hoppers? And yeah, it's going to go through two laser sorting. Laser sorting will take, if you can believe this, 30,000 looks a second. And then when it wants to kick something out, it will drop about four inches and eject what's, un what's undesirable. And we'll remove 95 to 98% of anything undesirable in this room before, before it goes into hand sorting. I know people are gonna be wondering, what do you do with the, the almonds, the well, almonds we use, that are removed? We use, we use everything. Okay. So an almond that's chipped or scratched, it could be made butter. Oh, or butter. It, or it could be made of uh, slice or dice or something like that. Okay. So we don't throw any almonds away. They're way too valuable to throw away. We'll just use it for a different use. All right, Jim, now we're in a cooler less noisy room and there's a lot of action going on in here. Yeah, just look at these ladies. Now this is the final inspection and we look at the equipment and I mentioned to you the equipment is taken out 95, 98% but this is the final sort before it goes into the box. What exactly are they pulling out? I mean, I've seen them going through everything. What are they pulling out? Yeah, they'll pull out, chip to scratch or they find any form material once in a day while well, there could be a reject almond. What's what's in the red box? We have some rejects right there. Yeah, we got a few rejects. Okay. And that could have been pulled out over a period of four or five hours. But anyway, we do not want that to go in the box. Okay. It's amazing that they're catching. I'm sitting here looking as we're talking and thinking, what would I pull out? No. But I they see can, one. Yeah, they I can find one. it. Okay, good job. Bam, Bam look at that. You're hired. I, You're hired. <laughs> Jim, you're doing test after test, after quality control, after QC. What are we doing now? Well, these ammons are just getting ready to go in the box, but we want to make sure there's no foreign material. So this lovely young lady will dump it on the table and she will look for pieces of foreign material. Foreign material being anything that's not an ammon. And she will count the pieces and then she will audit and put it down. We're looking for zero. Okay. And she'll take 50 pounds out of every 2,000 pounds that we run. And, and all of this gets recorded in the computer. If a customer receives some almonds and they have an issue with something, we'll show them exactly what we do. Okay. And, and we can take the customer clear back to the orchard. So we wow. know where these almonds, what orchard these almonds came out of, when they were hauled and shelled, when they were sized. We, we, have, we have a blueprint of these abbas from coming from the orchard going to the customer. You have to have that. Dedicated, absolutely dedicated employees. They're the most important aspect we have. We have laser sorters, we've got orchards that produce a lot of abbas, we've got state of the art equipment. But if you don't have the right people, you really don't have a, a successful business. And I can't emphasize how proud I am of the people that make up Stuart and Jasper. Stuart and Jasper is just made up of tremendous people. I have nothing to do with myself. It's all about the people.
you've had employees here for 10, 20, 30, 40. I met somebody who was here for over 40 years, right? 47 years 47 out years. of the orchard. Yeah. yeah. Thank so, you. I see, I don't want to hold that up to give away anything, but I see 000000. zero, 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 zero. Yeah. Pretty good today so far, huh? All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good job. All right, Jim, what's happening behind us here? They come out of the hand sorting, go in that hopper, automatically going in the 50 pound boxes. Boxes go down, they're formed over here, they get filled, the top fill gets glued, palletized, and then they go into our cold storage. And then this room where you're storing them, it's really cold in here. How cold yeah, is that? 45 to 50 degrees. So the next thing I'd like to do, Joel, is take you to another step where we're taking these almonds and we're either roasting, coating, we're doing something with them. This is the part where I get to eat them, right? You get to eat whatever you want. Right, you're pointing this way, I'll see you. We're now in the kitchen. I'm here with Jason Jasper, son of Jim. Jason, tell us a little bit about what we're doing in here. Well, we have numerous flavors of almonds here. Uh, seasoned flavors, sweet flavors, almond butter, you name it, we've got it. So over 50 flavors. What is she doing right now? Those are cinnamon glazed almonds that we're making right now. Um, make them in small batches. That's about a 12 pound batch that we're, uh, we make at a time. 14, 15 years ago, we decided it'd be fun to put some flavors on them. And the first flavor we came up with was the cinnamon glazed flavor you see there. And from there, we've gone crazy with it and come up with over 50 different flavors. Mm. What do you think? Oh, I love cinnamon caramelized almonds. Oh my gosh. What do I think? I'm reaching in for my second. That was really intense flavor. Well, our harvest has come to an end. I want to thank Jim, Jason, and everyone out here at Stewart and Jasper Orchards for teaching us all about almonds. <clears throat> Ammons, and I especially want to thank you, Stacy, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest. Now, if there's something you want to know more about, let me hear from you. Go to curiositychquest.org, click on the Send Us on a Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And who knows, it could be you that sends us on our next tasty outing. Now remember, every great adventure begins with just one person's curiosity. So I wonder, what are you curious about? I'm Joel Green. I'll see you next time. That's like a 2.0. You people in California know what I'm talking about.